when we talk about open source, there's one more very exciting thing that's happening in this space, and that is SLMs. Microsoft loves SLMs. In fact, one of the best is Phi, a model that is built by Microsoft Research on highly specialized data sets, which can rival models that are even 50 times bigger. This is what Satya Nadella said on Microsoft's Ignite keynote and I was very pleased to see this because I very much believe in these SLMs too and of course open source. So I just thought in this video we can take a quick look at this new model as a service from Microsoft, the Phi 2 and the Okra 2 model and the Azure AI Studio. So let's just get started. So here you can see kind of the blog post I posted about this. So announcing Llama 2 inference APIs and hosted fine tuning through models as a service in Azure AI. So if we look a bit deeper here, you can kind of see uh, we are excited to announce the upcoming preview of Model as a Service that offers you a pay-as-you-go inference API and hosted fine-tuning for Llama 2 in Azure AI Model Catalog. So I was really excited to see this pay-go or pay-as-you-go. Uh, we are definitely going to test this out and we're going to try to fine-tune stuff. You can see they also talk about supporting like Langchain to build LLM apps. So I think we're definitely going to explore more around this. So if we look a bit further down here, so we are announcing model as a service soon to enable model providers to offer their LLMs on Azure, kicking off with Meta 2's Llama 2 family of models. So traditionally, VMs with high-end GPUs meant for hosting frontier LLMs uh, are capable of generating thousands of tokens per second, but can be... Uh, prohibitively expensive for dead test cycles, right? But if we get this pay go inference, so we can be based, build based on input and output tokens like we do with the GPT-4 API. So model as a service makes getting started easy and pricing attractive for generative AI projects. And we can use open source models. So if you go over here to Azure Studio, I think you click on explore here. You can see there's something called models here and there's a catalog. And here you can kind of see the models that uh, this model as a service is going to offer. And there's quite a few models here. Uh, we can kind of scroll through them here. Uh, or we can sort here like in filter. So if we pick Meta, you can kind of see we have the code Llama, Llama 2, 13B. So let's just click on the Llama 2 here. Let's zoom out a bit. So here you can kind of see you get all the descriptions of the model. How it's built, hardware, software, training data, evaluation results. And we can even go on artifacts here. So you can kind of see this. Uh, I can guess you can see the files here. We can also try it out. Like, uh, hello, what is 2 plus 2? So we can kind of test it here. Right? And you can see we have the option to deploy this. But we don't have like the pay as you go option now, so I'm not going to try this now. But for another video, we are definitely going to try this out. We can go back to the model catalog. I also want to click on Microsoft Research and look at this Phi 2 model. Uh, this has the research license now, so I don't think you can use it for like commercial stuff. The Phi 2 language model is only 2.7 billion parameters. That is very small. Uh, I don't know exactly what kind of um, hardware we need to run this. I haven't looked into it. It took seven days to train. So we can get some information about the data set here too. Uh, a combination of NLP synthetic data created by AOAI GPT 3.5 and filtered web data from the Falcon. Okay. Which was assessed by GPT 4. That's pretty cool. I'm kind of excited to try this out. But as I said, we are going to wait for the pay-as-you-go um, service. You can also see this one. So just a few days ago, November 20th, uh, Microsoft Research released this paper called Okra 2 Teaching Small Language Model SLMs How to Reason. So let's take a quick look at this. So this Okra 2, uh, Okra was a 13 billion parameter language model that demonstrated strong reasoning abilities by imitating the step-by-step -step reasoning traces of more capable LLMs. So I know we did like a test where we tried to fine-tune the ChatGPT 3.5 on chain of thought thinking from GPT-4, and that worked pretty good. If you haven't seen that video, you can find it in my library. And here they kind of talk about expanding the capabilities of smaller language models. For example, when an extremely capable model like GPT-4 can answer complex tasks 
directly. Uh, a smaller model may benefit from breaking the task into steps. So this we have seen like all over the place, like step by step, chain of thought, and these techniques, right? So I also found it interesting, Okrise trained with an expanded, highly tailored synthetic data set. You can see the training data was generated such that it teaches Okra2 various reasoning techniques. Step by step, recall, then generate, recall, reason, generate, extract, generate, and direct answer methods. While also teaching it to choose different solution strategies from different tasks. And here they have some results comparing like Okra2 to Llama2. So you can see Okra in like the blue and black here. Uh, I think the 7B is the blue part here. So it's quite capable like uh, compared to Llama 2. It's even outperforming it in some things here. Uh, kind of all over the place actually. So that is interesting. So we are definitely going to test this model out too when it comes to the model as a service. So yeah, Microsoft really seems to be into these small language models as such as Nadella mentioned. Uh, and I found that fascinating, right? Because I kind of think like the future could be these smaller models that are fine-tuned on specific tasks, right, with specific data sets. So over this winter, I'm going to be trying to create my own small, highly precise data sets and fine-tune. We can do GPT-4 maybe. We can do these smaller open source models here on the Azure AI Studio. And we're just going to find some way to evaluate that and test it. So yeah, uh, like I said, we are probably going to spend some time trying out all these open source models, seeing what works, seeing what kind of things we can do with fine tuning. But I'm also going to do like the open, open AI interface, try to fine tune more on ChatGPT 3.5. I have a project on that coming up soon. So uh, I'm kind of into this fine tuning uh, search now so I thought it was pretty cool and yeah at the end is uh, I wanted to really recommend this video by Andre Carpati so this is a one hour talk intro to large language model so you just have to watch this it's so good it kind of explains everything uh, you need to know about large language models and it's such a good video so I'm gonna leave it a link in the description and just watch it if you are interested in this it kind of explains everything you need to know. It goes into fine tuning, uh, kind of stages of fine tuning. And just, I learned a lot from this. Here it kind of explains how you train ChatGPT. So we have like a stage one here, you can see. And we have stage two that is fine tuning. And after you watch this video, you kind of understand more about the power of fine tuning and how they did this at OpenAI and stuff like uh, at least like the, the principles, right? So go ahead, watch this video. You won't regret it. Uh, also wanted to mention, like, uh, I have a cool project. I'm not going to reveal it all, but this is going to be like Sunday's video. Uh, so I created these two AIs that has a voice that's going to discuss a lot of cool things. So watch out for that. Uh, I think that's probably going to be this Sunday. So you don't want to miss that either. But yeah. Just a different video today, looking at some future things we are going to do. And I really like that Microsoft are leaning into this open source, small language models. Uh, kind of excited for that. Uh, yeah, have a great day. And hopefully I see you on Sunday for this project.